Hey everyone, it's Mod6, and this is my mobile gaming, streaming, and YouTube studio. Let's check it out. You see that timing, kids? I felt him there, dude. I felt him there. And we have a winner. Oh, it feels good to be number one. This is the streaming and YouTube setup. Everything that you see here is what I use to make my stream on Twitch as well as these YouTube videos. Well, everything except for my waiting screen camera, which is a Logitech C920 that is up there on a tripod. That webcam is plugged into the computer and I use that blurred as an off angle for a waiting screen. Everything else here is what we use for both the set and the equipment for recording and streaming live. The primary game that I play is Call of Duty Mobile and there's two devices that I play that on. The primary device is this 2020 iPad 11 inch Pro. The other device that I play the game on is this iPhone 11 Pro Max. Those are the two devices. The iPad's the primary, but I like to play on the phone as well, just so that I play all versions and interactions with the game. I primarily stream through the iPad and it's connected to the computer with this dongle. The dongle has a USB port that I use to connect an ethernet cable to so that I have wired internet for the lowest ping possible and the best game performance. The video feed leaves the iPad with an HDMI cable into the streaming computer, and then this power cable also comes into the dongle. The iPad sits on a metal stand, and the stand has rubber portions on it that keep the iPad gripped and in place, as well as really stiff hinges. This stand does not move at all when I play the game, and is my favorite one that I found for the iPad for playing Call of Duty, or really any first person shooter, and the link to this, as well as other equipment, is in the description. This is my mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX Red switches. And right in front of the keyboard is the Elgato Stream Deck XL with all of the buttons and different functions that I use while streaming live, as well as different things that just make it convenient when editing and bringing up different programs while using the computer. The Stream Deck XL has so many buttons that I don't even have them all filled yet, but I got the largest one so that I've got the space as I develop the stream and perform more complex editing tasks. You see the American flag, huge mouse pad that covers everything, and the Razer Mamba mouse. Over here is the tripod that the camera sits on when I stream. The camera is connected to the computer with the HDMI cable and has a hard wire power adapter to replace the battery. The camera that I stream with is the same camera that you're, we're using to film right now and that's a Canon 80D digital SLR with a wide angle 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Live on the stream you see me talking into a Rode Procaster dynamic XLR microphone. It sits on a shock mount here and it's mounted on the Rode boom arm connected to the corner of the desk. The XLR cable runs across the boom arm behind the desk all the way over here to the mixing board. Now the mixing board I have is a Behringer 1222 USB mixer. It's a little bit overkill for this application. The microphone runs into the microphone line in one the game sound through the computer and all of the other computer sounds run in here through line five, six. And then this is run back to the computer with a mix minus. I use wired headphones. The headphones I use are Audio-Technica ATH M50X. These are the best studio headphones for $150 or less. Everything we've talked about up to this point is fed into the back of this Thermaltech P3 case. And I left the glass front off of it because I like this test bench look and I like to have everything exposed. I built this computer myself and it is custom built for streaming mobile games. It uses an i5-9400 series Intel processor, the Geoforce GTX 1660 series graphics processing unit is here with the new touring architecture which is particularly good for rendering video while live streaming. Each of both the iPad 
and the camera run into their own Elgato HD60 Pro capture cards. Now we use these three items to get different shots for the YouTube channel. This is a glide cam gimbal. This is used to mount the camera and get smooth cinematic shots while carrying the camera so that the shot isn't shaky. This is a boom arm for the Rode shotgun mic that's on top of the Canon 80D right now. And this is a Manfrotto monopod for the camera with a video head up top and an oil filled video chamber in the foot. One of the most important aspects of my stream and really any stream is lighting. Lighting will set you apart from your background, add dynamic color to the scene and really improve the overall quality of both the stream on Twitch as well as YouTube videos. For my lighting, my primary lights are here mounted on the wall. I have two LED lights, both of which came in a package that I got on Amazon. And then right behind the whole scene, we have a lighting setup that I got at Walmart. This is a $7 lighting setup for the colored lighting in the scene. We have two LED floodlights. The bottom here is set to red. The top one up there is set to blue. Behind the desk, you see a glow. Those are LED strip lights. All three of those LED lights have remote controls and I can set them to any color in the RGB spectrum. And I primarily stick with red and blue for both the stream and YouTube videos. Everything you see here might not be directly correlated with getting a video feed to Twitch or editing a video for YouTube, but all of this is the set or the scene that you see for the Twitch live video, the background that you see in the YouTube videos that I shoot. This set tells the story of why I have a unique perspective on Call of Duty Mobile or mobile gaming. And so these things come from mostly my military career. So over here on the far left, this is the hat that I wore on deployments in Afghanistan and my last deployment, particularly as a company commander. This is an old camera, but behind it is my Ranger School graduation photo from 2007. Ranger School is one of the most difficult schools in the United States Army, has less than a 50% graduation rate. I lost 25 pounds in my 61, 62 day experience in Ranger School, and this graduation photo means a lot to me. Leaning up against it is the first pistol I ever bought for myself. This is a Springfield TRP operator. This is a 1911, shoots a 45 caliber round. Behind the light, this is a special hat. This comes from an Italian army unit. They specialize in mountain warfare. As a company commander in the US Army, I was stationed in Northeastern Italy with my family. The 173rd Airborne Brigade is stationed there and that's the unit that I commanded a company of paratroopers in. Now, the 173rd Airborne has a special relationship with the Italian army units in the area. That is a traditional hat given to us by a close friend that lives in Northeastern Italy. So that means a lot to me because it reminds us of our friends in Italy, but also the correlation between the US Army and Italian Army units in the area. Now this is an M4. The M4 is the primary weapon that I carried on all three of my deployments as an infantry officer in the US Army to Afghanistan. This particular M4 is made by Sons of Liberty Gunworks in San Antonio, Texas, and it's the 10 year reunion rifle that's commemorative for my West Point 10 year class reunion a couple years ago. The rifle next to it is an Enland M1 paratrooper carbine. This rifle was what was carried by airborne infantry officers in World War II and this thing shoots a 30 caliber round and was a gift from my grandfather. This is special to me because it's got some history behind it and that's the job that I did in the army. This is the rifle that officers in World War II carried. Pretty cool. Now the last couple items over here, this is the helmet from my last deployment in Afghanistan. It's got some nicks in it from when I was hit by a grenade. I was injured on that final deployment. This is the helmet that I was wearing in that incident, but also for the rest of that time. Hearing protection that I wore throughout different training and deployment events in the Army. And this is my full dress jacket from when I was a cadet at West Point. I wore this in formal parades and to formal events all four years as a West Point cadet. It's got this crazy rank insignia on it and all of the awards and different items on it from the day that I graduated from West Point. It hasn't changed at all. I keep it here to remind me of some of my closest friends in the world were my company mates there from my company D4. Go Dukes. That about does it for the mobile streaming setup. Might seem like a little bit of overkill, but remember, 
I acquired this equipment over the course of something like six or eight years and a bunch of different projects. I've started podcasts. I still have one that's sort of active and a little bit dormant right now. I own a marketing and advertising agency and some of the equipment that I've used for this and other projects is, is from that and from different projects for work as well as other personal things. So. All of this equipment came over time. The computer is a custom built computer for this mobile streaming application. That was something that took a lot of planning and really took some research to find the right parts at the right price to keep it reasonable and still have a piece of equipment that does the job perfectly for the application in this case. Now I have one request of anyone that's made it this far in the video. What piece of equipment do you think is absolutely essential for the highest quality stream that you don't see here? What am I missing? What's key? And what could make the stream quality better? Watch the stream at twitch.tv slash mod6. Check me out on Instagram at mod6gaming and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. There are huge updates coming in Call of Duty Mobile and there'll be further iterations of this video on the streaming setup as it evolves. Thanks again, Mod6 out.